dollars. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted a chart of today's action in the E-mini S&P. And as you can see here, when the report came out on CPI, the market dropped 60 points, then rallied up 70 points, came down 70 points, and it also rallied back 70 points. That's a $20,000 move in the E-mini S&P in one day. It might be a record. I'm not sure of that, but frankly, it shouldn't. If it's not a record, it should be, but it's really, really quite wild. But what's interesting about that is the numbers that you know we were looking at today were pretty much spot on. If we take a look here at the hourly chart of the E-mini S&P, uh, I haven't updated it as of yet because these markets are jumping around quite a bit. But you'll notice here the 61% retracement of that move. This is what we mentioned yesterday and also when we did our videos last night, that there should be some pretty strong resistance there at uh, right around 4019 to 4020. That was the 61% retracement of the high that we had back on December 13th, which was a really, really big day. By the way, my guest today will be coming on in about 10 minutes. Uh, Bill Meridian will be coming on from uh, Cycles Research out of Vienna, Austria. So that's what we're looking at here in the mini S&P. Also, gold has reached the 61% retracement of the whole move down at 1900. The high was at 1905. We immediately dropped uh, $27 from that level. We've come back to trade above 1900 again, and we've got silver uh, above 2430. Remember, the big number in silver is at 2503, so we're coming very, very close to that also, which is going to be interesting. The other one that we talked about yesterday is not quite there yet, but it will take a look at it. This is as of yesterday, but I haven't updated it uh, as of today, but you'll be able to see the prices easily when you take a look at this chart. This is copper, March copper, and you can see the multiple ABCD patterns that are there, and it measures up to this top level. The high today so far has been uh, 421. From there, we drop down to 413. We're back to 420 again. This looks very, very close to getting to this level here at the 423 level, which is an eight, huge ABCD three drive to a top pattern, and also a 61% retracement of the whole move in copper comes in at uh, 429. So all of that's going to be, you know, real interesting. Um, on, a, on a personal note here, someone asked a question about um, Laverne Redfield and this coin collection that he had. Redfield was a, he was a industrialist. He was a, a gold miner. He lived in um, Carson City, Nevada. He died in 1974. Just he and his wife. They were hermits. He was a real. He was a real recluse. His home was built on a hill there in in um, Carson City, and then all, it was a beautiful. It looks like a church almost with the stained glass and stuff. The only time I was there is when we picked up the coins, which was in 1976. It was in the fall. Now, eight of us from California went up in two vans to pick up the coins. There were 400 bags. Each co each bag had 1,000 silver dollars. Each bag weighed $54, so you're 50, 54 pounds. So you're talking about 20,000 pounds. We split that up into two vans, two large vans, and they brought them down uh, you know, to Los Angeles. And But uh, there were all kinds of rarities in there. And it was really, really the stories behind it that I, I'm unfortunately I'm the only one left, folks. Uh, of the eight guys that went up there, they're all gone. That Leroy, Bob, you know, they're just uh, they just all passed away. But uh, anyway, that was an interesting time in my life to see that they gave me some coins that I put in a safety deposit box that I've never touched, and that was uh, 46 years ago. I also had some stuff for the kids. That they that they gave us most of the stuff 99% of the stuff that was there was silver, 
people tell you that there was a lot of gold there. There was no gold in that basement, folks, because I was down there looking and moving stuff around. So it was uh, it's pretty it's pretty spectacular. They paid seven point three million dollars for it. There were five coin dealers in the Los Angeles area that split it up at a million and a half a piece. And um, they brought it down to what they did. They just split it into five sections and gave each one of them a section. And they turned around and sold it over a period of years at huge profits. That's $7 million. Just to give you an example, folks, one bag there was a 1925S, I believe. I'm not sure, I'm not sure the exact one. But each of those coins back in those days was so rare – each silver dollar at that time was worth, I think, four thousand dollars. So that means you got a thousand times <laughs> that one bag was worth almost four million dollars itself. You know, so it was really, uh, it was really a spectacular uh, experience for me. The only reason I even got to go is because I was selling coins through Drexel Burnham, and uh, of course I knew all these coin dealers, and you know we were friends with Tommy John and the Dodgers and the whole family and stuff. We were. It's a really, t really tight-knit group, and so it was a lot of fun. But uh, I had a concealed weapons permit, so I was the only one that actually could cross state lines back then. And of course, Nevada, you could carry a gun no matter what. But uh, I did have you know, concealed carry permit. And the van that we had, of course, I had a hidden place for a, a M1 carbine and some other. That's crazy stuff when I was young. Anyway, that's pretty much uh, the story behind it. You know, I could tell other stories behind it. Maybe down the road I will, but uh, it was uh, it was really a, a, an unusual time. I, I knew it was unusual, but I, you know, the thing that I didn't do is I didn't write it all down. I mean, I had it in my mind, but I didn't write it all down. Now all these guys are gone and. You know, most of them have died in the last three or four years, and we always reminisced about it, but nobody ever really wrote it down. There's some books written, but the books that I looked at, they don't have it right. I mean, they're, they were saying there was all kinds of gold down there and stuff. There was not any gold down there, folks. Um, there were 400 bags of, of silver dollars. And there were some smaller pieces, of course, and there was a, there was a few twenty dollar uh, gold and ten dollar and five dollar gold pieces. But you know, we're talking just a you know really small percentage of what was down there. And they bought it all for seven point three million dollars from the attorney, uh, and because he didn't even leave an estate. You know, it was it was taken over by the estate. I don't know where the money finally went, but uh, you know, we we were they were out of there by uh, you know the fall of seventy six. So. Anyway, that's it. Always have a will, folks. That way you'll know where everything's going if you have anything left. And so who knows? We'll see what's going on here. Anyway, uh, we're going to have Bill Meridian coming up here at the break, hopefully. Uh, Al, Al, hopefully, have him all set up and we'll be able to talk with Bill. And that'll be a lot of fun. But uh, keep an eye on this copper up here at 423, 424, folks. It's got a lot of stuff up there that says it should be having some problems, but these markets are very active. And uh, I want to show one other chart here, and that is the chart of the euro, because we're getting really close here, folks, in the euro to a pretty good turn. I want to bring this up to you to take a look at it, because uh, we're getting really close here in the euro, i.e. the dollar possibly turning. So let's uh, pay attention to that, too. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're... Back, folks, and we have as our guest, I believe, Bill Meridian on the line here. Bill, how are you doing today? Good, Larry. How are you? I'm very good, Bill. We have a question of a personal sure. nature. I, I don't think it, I think I know the answer, but I'll let you okay. answer it. Well, why do you use the pen name of Bill Meridian? Because when I started doing this and becoming independent, I was still working for Payne Weber. And at ah. Payne Weber, the rules are. If yep. you're writing a book, doing software, doing anything, you have to let them know and has to have their approval. So I just invented another name, which I really don't use much anymore. Mm -hmm. I remember that because you told me that story once when we yep. were in New York, and I, I just wanted yep. to make sure it verified that way and you hear it from you instead of from me. Um, are you able to post your charts in today to uh, let the folks know uh, what you're looking at today? Uh, yes, as soon as I – Okay. And also, the, the other question, when, when is your uh, program for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles? Was that yesterday? Oh, it's um, today. Today, okay. Okay, that, that'll that be after uh, 4 o'clock. I think 5 p.m. EST, I think. Okay, all right, that's good. People get I a think. chance to listen to it because it's going to be a good show. They've had some really good speakers, which I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but none of any better than you, folks. I have to tell you, uh, Bill, that we had more comments about your call in gold over the last four or five months that really was very, oh, yeah. very helpful here. So well, you've been spot on. Looks like we're going higher too, doesn't it? Yes. Well, let me just say about that. The, the basis of what I do is I started out with technical analysis when I was 17. Then I uh, met Arthur Merrill, who wrote Behavior of Prices on Wall Street and Filtered Waves. And Arthur was the one who wrote the book. You know, stocks are weak on Monday, they're strong on Friday, strong in December, weak in September, and that tuned me into seasonality. And so about gold, gold is strong December and January, but that's only one cycle. That's the annual cycle of the year, the seasonal cycle. If you're an astrologer, you'll say the sun's through the signs. What about all the other cycles? So my other – my program also will extract – Using and you know Richard Mogi got me on this path from the uh, former head of the foundation for eight years, and that determines what all the other cycles are. So if you've got the annual cycle and let's say the month is up 60 percent, and you've got the all the other dynamic cycles pointing up, your odds of a higher market are 65 or 70 percent. There's an old saying 
you probably know, Larry, that is if you can be right 60% of the time, you can make a fortune. That's true. <laughs> and I've got, I've got an example. Let me just start here. Let me just go through the summary. So the S&P is likely to extend its rally, I think, probably into April. Um, all right, that number three should have been a change. It, it, the uh, 1410 and the dynamic cycles are both going down till the third week of January, but you'll note the market is going up. So I thought the market was going to decline for three weeks and bottom here, which is why I've had very few equity positions. But in inverted yield curves bring recessions in lower markets. We're already in a recession. Layoffs are starting. The real estate is starting. It's, it's peaking in its cycle. Commodities, gold, and oil are all likely to move higher. It will be like the 70s and bonds lower. That's the summary. So let's apply contrary opinion. Here's Barron's, and it's a stocks could pop 10% in the coming year. Well, that is a negative using the front page of <laughs> Barron's. Now, here's another one, applying contrary opinion. This is a plus for technology. It's tech's bill comes due. And what it's saying is revenue growth and therefore profits are not growing as much as before. And so you've seen what's happening. They're laying people off. They're, they're getting back in line. But I think this describes what just happened. I think it describes, you know, the – what was the NASDAQ on 35%? And mm -hmm. Arthur Merrill's work shows the usual correction in a bull market. It's one third, or we can say uh, use the Fibonacci 38.2. And um, so I don't have any technology stocks to buy, but I'm keeping this in mind at the moment. So how do we know the economy is weakening? Now, trucking tonnage is topping. I was a trucking analyst for Value Line on Wall Street, and trucking tonnage drives the FRB index of industrial production, which in turn drives GDP. And in fact, some of the companies I was talking to did not know that until I told them. So this looks like, it looks like a double top. Looks like it's rounding over and turning down. Now, these are new orders. So it's down in recession territory, and that's from November. And this mm -hmm. is the inverted yield curve, which means – Law, shorter rates are higher than long-term rates because there's a great desire for credit because the economy is slowing and people want to stay afloat. Also, analysts are not adjusting earnings for a worsening situation, and governments have begun a war on energy and on free enterprise, as far as I can see, which is bearish. Now, the January review, let's just say that both election and decennial pattern, it's up about two-thirds of the time. So that's incorporating the four-year cycle and the 10-year cycle and cycles for those of you who don't know too much about or new new to it there's the one four ten year cycle there's the which is the annual cycle the election year cycle and the decennial cycle clumped together dynamic cycles are just extracted straight from the data that's number two number cycles wd gan look at the market 60 years ago 10 years ago 30 years ago Planetary cycles. Now, when someone says – this always gets me – they don't believe in planetary cycles, but they believe the market rallies in the spring, it tops in the summer, it goes down in September. <laughs> well, that's – that the calendar's relative position of the Earth and the sun. So anyway, it's best when they all confirm. When you start doing this, you think you've got the answer, and then you find out when it doesn't work, maybe one of the other cycles works. So I try and look at them all. So here's the one for 10-year cycle for this year, 2023. We saw it uh, last time for 2022. The one-year cycle in red, the four-year cycle in blue, and the 10-year cycle in green. And the summary is at the bottom. And as you can see, it bottoms down here, which is sort of – that's the middle to the third week of uh, – no, over here, I meant 2023. 20, uh, that's about the January 20th or so. Then it rallies up into April. Then it's sort of flat and then down into the end of the year. So anyway, for the moment, it has not been weak in the first three weeks. I flipped my opinion in the last couple of days because new highs are starting to exceed new lows again, but with regularity. Now, here's the dynamic cycle. This is cycle number two. And where does it bottom? Around January 20th, it runs up into April, so they confirm each other. So this is enough for me from the cycle's basis. And People are extremely bearish. I mentioned the new highs and new lows. And I think downside volume uh, divided by upside volume or upside by downside hit a low, a historical low. So this is the 1-4 10-year cycle blown up to show only Q1. 
So you'll see right here, this is um, about January 20th to 23rd. And here's the dynamic cycle, and it bottoms around the same time. So the two of them are confirming each other. And the S&P, it hit the 50. You'll notice these, I, I really won't feel comfortable until we get down here. It's not going to happen now, but maybe toward the end of the year. Down here to around 3,300. At the moment, we're at the 50% retracement of this this rally. Yeah. Hey, Bill, we've got to pay a few gotta bills go sell now. Things. We've got to sell some things. you got it, brother. Hey, we'll be right back with Bill Cerubi of, uh-oh, Bill Meridian, Bill Cerubi of... Uh, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. We'll be right back, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, with Bill Sruby of Market Research. <laughs> Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. Bill, you want to continue, please? And here, the current situation, uh, we have resistance at 4,000. Uh, I don't think that's going to be broken now. I think the market sells off today, tomorrow, and then I think it, it starts a rally again on Monday. So if I'm correct about this period being up, that's got to be broken, which I think might happen toward the end of the month. So which stocks do you buy? Now, these are Cycles Research stock screens. This process, I began with the Dow Jones 30. That's actually now 36 months. The long stocks have risen by an amount about 60% greater than that of the short sales and 28% over the DJIA. The short sales were net negative over that time period at minus 16%. So my software can now run this. And this, uh, at the bottom, you see the results, long, short, in, S in the S&P 500. So that was then applied to 500 stocks because it is now computerized. 
So uh, how does this work? Well, in the first column you see here, this was run on December 31st. Here is the stock. That's the seasonal rank. In other words, for February, the next month, it's been the 14th best performer. And right now, in terms of relative strength, now that was current on December 31. It was third of the entire S&P 500. And so the strongest stocks are at the top. You notice Baker, which is the old Baker Hughes, which is – Energy Marathon, which is energy. Nucor is not energy, but it's a steel company. Schlumberger, which of, of course is energy. Devon, which is a high yield and is energy. And Exxon. And you will notice uh, very few technology stocks, and there are only three. Two chip stocks, which are uh, Micron and Western Digital, and also the barcode scanner Zebra. And those were stocks to short. Now, you'll note over here, this stock, which is Progressive Insurance, was ranked 485 in relative strength out of 500 stocks. These are stocks to short. So you can take a look at those and see how they work out by the end of the month. Now, this is very informative. Off to a good start. 2023 is not that old. It's very young. And what – you have United Airlines, Carnival Cruise Lines, American Airlines – Royal Caribbean Group, Norwegian Cruise Lines, I think everybody's going on holiday, and um, Wind Resorts, Delta Airlines, and MGM Resorts. So that suggests to look into that group. And you'll notice wow. very little technology here. Now, off to a slow start in 2023, there are an awful lot of healthcare stocks in here, which I, I thought they would do well, but there's Baxter, Molina, United Healthcare. <clears throat> and there are a bunch of them down here as soon as I find them. Humana, CVS Health, and a special mention goes to Archer Daniels Midland, which is an agricultural stock, which is down 6.65%. And remember, the market's only been open for, what, a week and a half? We're at the 11th. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I mention that is I want to demonstrate the power of the annual cycle. That's Archer Daniels Midland over the last 42 years. That's its average cycle. And if you read my newsletter, Cycles Research Early Warning Service, or looked at my portfolio or managed accounts, I bought it in August 1st. Because from August 1st to the uh, end of the year, Archer Daniels has rallied about, I think it's now 79 or 80 percent of the time. You're not going to get an engraved invitation to invest in stocks, but this is what it would look like. So the stock actually rose 14 percent in this time period. I sold it on the last trading day of December. And – Already, it's down, look at this, 6.65%. It took from here to here 14%, and after 10 days, it's down, it's given half of that back. Wow. And if you are have a long-only portfolio, why do you, if you own the stock, if you own the stock, uh, uh, if you buy and hold, it's up 9% annually over 40 years. If you bought it here and held it to here, you're down 8% annually, and if you bought it here and wrote it up to here, you're up over 30%. I think it's 32%. So this is one of the reasons I got into trouble in my career. I was always adjusting the portfolios for these cycles, and of course, none of the people at these institutions believe in cycles. So Now, here's growth versus value stocks. You see where value is? It's down where it was in 2000, and so energy stocks are value stocks, industrial stocks, stocks like that. Here we have the actual price of oil. This is the commodity, not the stocks. So the red bar tells us it's up about 50% of the time in January. That rises to almost 60 in February. Then you see March and April are up over 60. The blue bar is the change in price. So here you can see the price has changed plus 3.5%. The green bar is expected returns, the product of the red and the blue. So where are we? We're at the beginning of the cycle. So the top six stocks, when I run my other screens, which I haven't shown here, the top six stocks are all in the energy for, for Q1. And the XLE, of course, is the exchange-traded fund for the energy stocks. From January 4th to June 9th, the XLE has risen 71% of the time. From January 30th to March 5th, it's rallied 75% of these times. That's number one for all the 12 sectors. So this is energy stocks. This is stocks, not the oil. You'll note it has risen. Well, it's about the same pattern. It's strong up into April. When do I think the market will top? April. So what are you going to own in the first quarter? What will you overweight? 
Well, I would recommend Schlumberger. This is a monthly chart. This is price. This is momentum. And that's the relative strength. And this relative strength is a, read it right here, a five-period moving average minus a 15-period moving average. That quantity is taken as a three-period moving average developed by my old friend Ian Notley at the Notley Information Service. And you'll notice this little, you notice the higher, you look for higher lows. You see the higher lows here. That's a buy signal. And there's the low. Then you hit a high here, you down here, up here, down. But you've got higher lows again. But the key here is really relative strength. Look at the relative strength. It peaked in 2008. It's been underperforming the S&P 500 since then. And it just turned up. General rule of thumb. Take the period it's been underperforming, which here is seven, eight years, multiply it by 0.6, and that's how many years of outperformance you can expect. So no problem there. It looks like four to five years up, and it matches everything else we're looking at. And, of course, it's a very big, uh, well-known company. And then we have Hess Oil. Now, Hess, you'll notice the same pattern here, the same relative strength upturn here. And when I got to Abu Dhabi in 1990, the technology portfolio was in bad shape. It was 91. And the uh, trader said, hey, hey, Billy, he was a funny guy from Pakistan, is you want me to sell this gradually? He said, no, I wanted to have the portfolio. So he dumped the whole thing on the market, and we dropped the stock two and seven eighths. The, uh, <laughs> our new fund manager who had been uh, – they got they, – they went – they hired these guys at the damaged fund manager shop. Uh, he flipped out. And I said, well, we, we want to sell the stock. That's it. And you don't dump it all at once. I said, why not? The point I'm trying to make is if this is going down, you're trading against the guys who have that kind of power, very big institutions. And when it's going up, if you're shorting, you're shorting against their buying. That's why I emphasize the green relative strength line. Most people look at the absolute line. But this is telling me, even though it's very overbought, it's only turning up now in relative strength. So it's really not that overbought. But it's really not overbought. Outside of the uh, – now, here's – remember I met, you, you mentioned gold. Look at the month of January. It's up almost 55 percent of the time. And look at the expected – the um, average change is almost plus 2 percent. And look at February. March is a black hole for bonds, for gold, uh, for lots of different uh, price series. So right now, we got the gold. We're going to hold it, I think, at least through this month and maybe into next Stay with us for another break, folks. Sure. We've got to pay some more bills. Bill Cerilby, folks, Cycles Research. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Bill Sarubi and for Cycles Research. Bill, please continue. Yeah, so just to review gold here, you could see, again, the red line means it's up almost 55% of the time here, January, February. Blue line is the profit of the change in price, and the green line is the product of the first two. And you can see it is lowest in the month of March. In the month of October, it's only been up about 45% of the time, which is the lowest, but you'll note for a small loss. So right now... We're in the strong part of the year here, January, February. We'll probably have a correction in March. And really, the, the big run starts in – in bull markets, it starts in June. In bear markets, it starts in August. But you can see why. And uh, right now, we have you know, transitioned from here over to here. And if I overlay – well, it's next slide. This is why I think this is fitting with the entire theme of – a bear market in the overall indices, but a bull market in value stocks and in resource stocks. And who produces lots of resources but the emerging market countries? Now, the emerging markets, according to Sentiment Trader, are starting to show some real strength. And something I was looking for, having been through this before. But this is the Commodity Research Bureau Index of All Commodities. And you will note it trends higher for the year. This is light crude, light crude oil. You'll note. It goes up most of the year. Now, March and April are the two strongest months to hold oil, so I kind of doubt it's going to be very weak in here, which looks like February. And here you see gold, which shows a peak up in May, then a decline into September, then another rally, then a decline. But for the first quarter, first half of the year, commodities, value stocks, and I think emerging markets are all likely to head higher. It's very much like the 70s, which Larry and mm -hmm. I remember. Oh, sure do. Yep. <laughs> and now outside of this, uh, these stocks, you know, outside of technology, which I don't think is bottom yet, energy, um, this is Caterpillar. And this comes up as the strongest stock in the Dow Jones in terms of relative strength and seasonality. And again, you will note this was not an institutional favorite. Look at the relative strength. The last time it outperformed was up you know, 2009 to 2011. It's been down ever since, and it's broken the downtrend line here to the upside. Actually, relatively, it bottomed in 2020. And again, now look at the momentum. Here, the momentum is giving the same sort of buy signal we saw earlier, but look how oversold it is. It's according to this graph. It says it's as cheap or as oversold as it was in 2019, 2015. And the only year that was low was 2009. And it's a big, well-known name. They're not going to go bust tomorrow. And Boeing, which has been uh, – had a load of fundamental troubles, which had uh, depressed it. But now you've got – you see you've got this um, – if I can find the cursor, this low down here. Then you've got a higher low over here, or I think maybe that's the low over there. And again, note the higher lows in momentum. So there's a clear divergence, which is bullish. And here, the relative strength only turned up about six months ago. So it's not relatively as strong as the other stocks. So the indices right now 
are being pulled down mostly with, you know, with the NASDAQ down 30, 33 percent. It's these very big cap giants that produce real value, have little or no debt, tremendous cash flow. But the growth, which was so enormous before, you know, I did technology in Abu Dhabi in the 90s and I would hear calls from concerned senior people that were so overweight in technology and this stock is up you know the PE is uh, let's say um, 50 and I said well can you wait till earnings earnings come out this week they'll, they'll be pretty good the earnings would jump 100%. The P.E. ratio is no longer 50, it's 25, which is why we started dividing P.E. by growth rate or the PEG ratio. So there's still, as I said, I think it's a pricing problem. The stocks just got way too expensive and they started to come down and the selling cascaded on itself and fundamentally that revenue growth that I just mentioned, 50%, is no longer there. I mean, it's still very healthy. Any of us would like a business growing at, you know, any 15 to 30% or so. We would all love that, but it's just lower than it was before. And they don't have the cash flow to give away all the goodies. I used to go to technology shows in London, New York, San Francisco, and they give you all sorts of stuff. And uh, now they're laying off people. They're having to cut back and they're coming back down to earth. But I don't think the stock market has really recognized that just yet. Mm -hmm. Bill, we've got a question from one of our listeners. Sure. Do, do you have an opinion on natural gas? Uh, uh, yes, I have an opinion. It's very, very difficult to analyze. <laughs> <laughs> it's I've tried all kinds of cycles, and it just never – it just um, doesn't follow any cycles that I can find. It's not consistent. Okay. Well, that's a good enough answer for me. You certainly got all these others nailed up pretty good. Unless you've been right on crude oil, the stock market, and gold and treasury bonds. I, that's a trifecta in my opinion, so keep up the good work. Please continue. Okay. Well, I – okay, the real estate cycle. Now, I didn't reproduce it this time, but there's an 18-year real estate, real estate cycle that um, I started talking about it six months ago, if you remember, Larry. It tops now, but it looks like the numbers – have already started to catch up with it. The number of realtors in America, you'll notice it, it appears to be, it's up in the red zone, looks like it's topping. The What's the average is about 1 million and we're up, we've got 1.6 million people registered with the NIR, which I, I guess is a real estate in, in group. And um, I've got a bunch of these, but I showed them all last time. So if you want to, um, yeah, you can read me on Forbes.com and the Foundation for the Study of Cycles is cycles.org. And uh, I am at um, BillMeridian.com or CyclesResearch.com, publishing the Early Warning Service. Can you tell us a little bit about the program you're going to be giving today at 5 o'clock at uh, how the folks well, it's slanted, sign up for that? It's slanted. It's, slanted, it's re relatively the same, but it's slanted more toward institutions. Mm -hmm. And what stocks okay. to pick and how to, you know, because the uh, the market performance, I was told in graduate school in 72 that the institutions would become so large that they'll control the stock market, which uh, they, they were considered to be heavy hitters in 1970. You know, now they, they do control the market and they usually make their decisions as to what they're going to buy, the positions they're going to take between November and uh, late January. So the direction of the market last year, it was down and the whole year was down. That's the way that it works. And this year, it looks like it's going to be flat. Now, if it's flat, then there's about a 60% chance of a higher market and a higher market means 10 or 12%. I don't know how to – you know, it's definitely not going to be a 20 to 30% year. That I can say. Mm. And the cycles indicate we'll be up until March or April and then down after that. But, Larry, you can remember the bifurcated market in the 70s when all oh, inflation hedges yeah. – Gold, oil, everything went up and up and up and up from 72 to about 80. And in 80, when the commodities peaked, you remember Salomon Brothers bought the commodity trading house? Mm -hmm. I sure do. Right nice. at the top. And there was a huge bust. Yeah. Hey, Bill, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you on again soon. And be safe and good luck on your show today. You'll knock them dead as always, buddy. Oh, well, thank you. Bye-bye. You bet. Bill Sarubi, folks. Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. We'll be right back.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, I posted the daily chart of the euro, which is the reverse of the dollar index. And as you can see, we had the three drive to a bottom pattern you know, way back here uh, at the end of the year. Well, actually, it was in, uh, looks like it was in, it was in October when the rest of the market back October the 13th. Uh, we've had a really strong rally here. Now, what we're approaching now, we just hit just a few minutes ago, we just hit the 78% retracement of the high that we made for the whole year. So that's a, that's a huge correction. You'll notice the last major correction we had five days ago was right at the old 382 level and it's continuing to go higher so it has to stop right here or we'd be looking at much much higher prices in the euro i.e lower gold prices lower dollar prices and lower dollar prices mean higher gold prices folks so we got gold trading at 1901 the 61 percent retracement on the whole move was at 1900 high was at 90, uh, 1906 today and of course we still have that outstanding objective in silver which is 2503 that's a monster number folks those of you that subscribe to the 24 7 newsletter you'll know that we've been watching that number in silver for a long time and uh, we'll be able to uh, see what's going to happen to that very very shortly but when we're at the euro right now trading at 108.40 that is right on the money, folks. The number is 108.45, so it's within five pips of the high on the daily chart. So 
circle that. That's going to be very important. We're up six days in a row, too. Uh, you, you might get days more than six or seven days in the euro, but it's very unusual. So it's got to stop right here. Or, as they say in the trade, we are going to go higher. So that's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. And our guest tomorrow, with God willing, will be Peter Elides, depending on market conditions. We'll be right back tomorrow. Tomorrow.